Here's a beautiful theorem in linear algebra that any student of linear algebra can really understand, but it's actually very deep. So we start off with an n by n matrix A, and the theorem states there is a polynomial P of X of degree less than or equal to n squared, which is the number of entries in the matrix, if it's an n by n matrix, so that P of A is equal to zero. So to be more explicit, if we wrote down P of X as a polynomial, so we could write it down, for example, as ck x to the k plus ck minus 1 x to the k minus 1 dot 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 plus c1 x plus c naught. If we wrote it in this form, then evaluating the polynomial on the matrix A would look like this. It would be p of A, which is going to equal to ck a to the k, where you take the kth power of the matrix, plus ck minus 1 a to the k minus 1, and so on and so forth, all the way up to c1 a, plus C naught times the identity. Because of course you can't add on a scalar to a n by n matrix, so you have to multiply with the identity to make sense of that. But this is the polynomial, and what the theorem is saying is we can find such a polynomial, which is also non-zero, okay? So I should say it's also a non-zero polynomial, otherwise any polynomial would do, and its degree is less than or equal to n squared. So the degree k is going to be less than or equal to n squared, and this expression is equal to zero. Okay, so how is that true? How are we going to establish that? It's a really beautiful result if you think about it. How do we find such a polynomial? So here's a trick and it's going to be based on very basic and fundamental linear algebra principles. So the idea is going to be the following. This expression here that we've written down is actually a linear combination of vectors in some space. And the space we're going to look at is the following. We're going to call it m n times n. This is the space of all n by n square matrices. Okay, so all n by n matrices. I haven't specified coefficients of the matrices, but you can take them to be over any field. If you don't know what a field is, you could take them to be real numbers, complex numbers, rational numbers, it doesn't matter. Okay, so we're looking at the space of n by n matrices. These can be thought of like vectors. You can add them and you can scale them. You can scale a matrix by scaling all its entries. You can add two matrices by adding them entry by entry, like usual matrix addition. And the point here is that if you think about what an n by n matrix is, it has n squared coordinates. Okay, they're n squared possible entries of the matrix. And if you like, if we're thinking about them as real numbers, you can identify the matrices. You can think of them as just being n squared dimensional Euclidean space. Because basically, how do you add the matrices? You add them coordinate wise, just like vectors, and you scale them coordinate wise. So effectively, and this is what we call an isomorphism in math, we say these are isomorphic. And the interesting thing about thinking about the n by n matrices in this way is now this expression becomes a linear combination of vectors. So for example, if we just write this down here, if you think about all these a power k, a power k minus 1 up to the identity, if you write, this, write them down as follows, you get i, a, a squared, all the way up to a power k. This is a collection of k plus 1 vectors. Okay, so you have k plus 1 vectors inside rn squared. Okay, so inside rn squared. And if you're loving this video so far, please don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe. It really helps. I'm trying to make reach as many people as possible to expose them to math across all topics and levels. Makes a huge difference. And I'd love to hear your thoughts on the video too. But here we've got k plus one vectors in Rn squared. And we're asking, is there a relation between them? What is called a linear dependence relation between them? So if you think about it, and this is a principle in linear algebra, and I'm gonna write it up top. The principle is that if you have more vectors than the dimension, you can always find a relationship between the vectors. So a nice example is if you just think about the plane R2, um, you can, if you have two vectors V and W, let's say V and W, then you may not be able to find a relationship between them of the form AV plus BW is equal to zero, where A and B are scalars. On the other hand, if you have a third vector U, you can always find a relationship between U, V, and W. Why is that? Well, if you think about the coordinates of V, V has two coordinates, V1, V2, W has two coordinates, W1, W2, and U has two coordinates. U has two coordinates, U1, U2. So if you think about what a relationship between these three vectors is, if you think about a relation like AV plus BW plus CU equals to zero, that can be represented by a system of two equations, 
in three variables. The equations are going to be, you could think about the sum, think about its coordinates. You're going to have AV1 plus BW1 plus CU1, and you're going to have AV2 plus BW2 plus CU2. Okay, so if you want to set this equals to zero, you want to find A, B, and C that solve it, you've got two equations and you've got three variables, and you can always solve such a system of equations. Okay, that's coming down to the theory of equations. So in general, what we say is that if you have more vectors in the dimension, you can always find a relation between them. And that ends the proof because if you think about these powers of A, you know that they're all living inside is n squared dimensional space. So if you have at least n squared plus one of these entities, which we think of as vectors in m n times n, you can always find a relation between them, a linear relation between them. And that linear relation will give you a polynomial. To write it out precisely, you can think about, because if you take k is equal to n squared, then there are going to be n squared plus one vectors here. Because remember, we're including the identity. And so you're going to say that because you have n squared plus one vectors in n squared dimension space, there's going to be a linear relation. That requires proving. That's a separate question, but that's an intuitive principle. Okay, so, but it does require rigorous proof. So therefore, there exists a polynomial. Okay, so therefore, we can say that C naught I plus C one A plus all the way up to C n squared A n squared um, so a power n squared, okay? C n squared, a power n squared is equal to zero for some ci's that are not all zero, okay? So it's a non-trivial relation. If all the coefficients are zero, then that's of course always true. So where not all ci's are zero, okay? So not all ci's are zero, and that's our relation. And that's why I say that we can find a polynomial of degree less than or equal to n squared, okay? It could be that this c n squared coefficient is zero. That could be. So then the polynomial would have degree less than n squared. Okay, now what's really cool is there is a beautiful theorem in linear algebra called the Cayley-Hamilton theorem. And the Cayley-Hamilton theorem says that actually you can find a polynomial of degree equal to n, or less than or equal to n, that has a as a root. And that exploits the fact that these powers of a, they're not arbitrary vectors in an n squared dimensional space, right? They have a very special structure. They're all powers of a fixed matrix. So it makes sense this proof is not optimal. We haven't exploited all the structure. And actually, the Cayley-Hamilton theorem shows you if you exploit more structure, you can find a polynomial of degree less than or equal to n and not just n squared. That's a topic for another video. But hope you love that video. And a huge thank you so much to Alex, Nathan, and Trang for their ongoing support on Patreon. It makes a huge difference to the channel. Small contributions there really add up and really help me free up time and go on producing infinite free accessible math education because I currently do everything on my own. There are exclusive perks on Patreon and also there's the option if you'd like to support, which I'm really grateful for if you choose to support, you can have a look at the join button on YouTube channel memberships, which is available on the desktop browser. That's an alternate method. Thank you so much to everyone who supported the channel so far, everyone who's liked, watched and commented. And I've got two fun videos for you that you're gonna love. The first video is a proof that complex conjugate roots always occur in pairs. So if you have a polynomial, say with real coefficients, have you wondered why if two plus three i is a root, then two minus three i also has to be a root? Even if the polynomial is so complicated, you can just say that. There's a rigorous proof and it's really beautiful. It's an introduction to Galois theory, advanced kind of mathematics. Check it out, it's gonna pop on the screen here. And another fun video you're gonna love is gonna appear here. Check that out too. Check out my channel. The playlist tab is content organized according to topic and level. And I'm super excited to catch you out of these two videos.